Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 7 of the Ranked Up series and the final place where we will stop during this little journey. In this video, I'll be going over a GC2 replay and go over the mistakes as well as where the player can correct them to rank up or improve overall. I hope you all enjoy and I'll see you in the video. What's up everyone, welcome to the replay review section of the video. And I do hope you guys have enjoyed the series as much as I have. I've had a little... A little more fun back with the uh, editing and all that crazy stuff. So hopefully you guys did enjoy it. And maybe I can develop the series into something else. Maybe a one series. But we already start the corrections. And right here I think overall this play was good. But I want to, as I've said every video before, you want to keep an eye on the ball here. It is in a very dangerous spot. And if we just take our eyes off of it for like one second, and maybe our teammate's not there and our opponent is, like right here. This is a scoreable angle for our opponents, and just because, you know, we just hit it up and hope for the best, kind of. But, good turn. Luckily, CJ Miss is there, our teammate is there to follow through. But kind of all this, uh... All this, pretty much this part was revabbing with it. They scored. I was going to say something about but I forgot they scored. This is all good here. Playing the high. This is not really much you can do here. That, And this is kind of the, the theme of GC2. I was having a little uh, discussion about it earlier uh, today on stream and a lot of us came to the conclusion that besides champ, GC2 is probably the worst rank in the game uh, just because of this stuff happening, right? A double commit. You can't do anything here. You're falling and you're just kind of hoping to get the dunk, which don't do and teammate double commits with you, so nothing I can knock you points wise there. Another double commit though. So keep this in mind when you're watching uh, and say that you see it. We are, what's that, 45 seconds into the game and there's been three double commits. It's not looking good, right? Good back pass here. Good time taking here. We're using a lot of boost, right? Like, this is where positioning is so key and important, especially, you know, in GC2 and up. Everywhere below as well. But GC2 and up, it's especially important because if we're on the right position here, we can score. And I know you're watching the opponent, and this is where we're finally not just watching the game. We're involved in the play. Like, we're looking to where this ball is going and like we're trying to position ourselves based off of it we don't know how much cj has here but our teammate does get the bump so we are all playing the precaution here like we're playing cautious here but this is where we can shoot the ball it would be decently hard not impossible right but decently hard like he does cover it maybe we go for a chip here like, a little bit sooner. Like, this is where... Uh, how do I... Uh... You go here, you pop it. Just with a little jump. You use, like, five boost. And the ball's up. Uh, the Dominus has no boost. And you have a double tap potential. Same here. We kind of rush it a little bit. Good boost grab. Kind of rush this a little bit. I would have taken just a little bit more time to make sure it corrects to the the goal. So it's a possible shot, possible presence on the offense. Oh, this is fine. Now, this is a great save here. We get, you guys can call it lucky bounce, but this is a, a good play here. We realize that, oh, they are still only going one direction and if I jump at this direction and kind of pinch the ball 
as long as it stops moving forward and goes backwards or neutral uh, mainly backwards it's a save then at that point it's not up to you it's up to your teammate which is out of your hands right right here this is this is a questionable jump i mainly say that because cj's on the ball again and your teammates your teammates in front of you with very little he's gonna grab the hundred but with very little and we kind of 50 into him if we go up more like vertical and we hit the ball maybe we hit it above him and we continue for a double tap but that's like the best best <coughs> best case scenario sorry about that household is a little sick so i got a little bit of a stuffy nose so sorry about that I like the idea this is yet again my my little rant about mechanics where it's not necessary and we just kind of give away possession here and that's my main thing when i warn about mechanics it's not that mechanics are bad and you should never do them no, it's, it's fine to go for them right i always got to reiterate that it's fine to go with them it's fine to learn them but if we're putting such a heavy emphasis on it and all you can do is hit triple tap resets but you can't score an open net i'd rather have the gold that can score the open net than the mechanical like the mechanical gold that can't hit the ball if it's just rolling on the ground right i i just look for consistency right no one's a robot maybe except for some of the the top s tier pros but Even there, it's like, it's all about consistency. Uh, that's fine. This is good. All right, most, most of the game, I'll, I'll be saying, like, everything here is good. Because we're at that sort of rank where it's not obvious things. Like, I said that last video, but it's really not obvious things. And I don't know where... Uh, if any of you guys know these people, <laughs> feel free to say what they are. But I'm guessing this is around mid to low GC2. Because just just by the, the way that they're playing, I don't think this is high GC2. Or if it is, it's not uh, my coast. Because if you guys have been watching long enough, you know, <laughs> you know the players we run into at at high to mid uh gc2 most of right most of this play is good uh i forgot was that his teammate yeah that was his teammate so our our objective here is to stall and wait for him or force it high or force it low whichever so cj goes up which means you try to force it uh probably low here and i'm saying this because your teammate here probably either Got the corner boost because I didn't see anyone go to the right side off kickoff, which means that the back right boost is there. And if you spawn back right, prob most likely has the 100 boost. So our goal is to try to get this low and or as slow rolling as possible towards uh, our teammate. Just for possession and stuff. Right here, this is fine. You know, the... I forgot what it's called, like the... Whatever, the, the wall jump there thing. You could say that's uh, a little too aggressive. I think it's fine. An overstep, maybe. But, you know, we still regain possession. We still uh, got possession. We realize here that we have to go back. That's good awareness. CJ gets it maybe a little bit too hard of a touch. But we do end up following it up and getting a goal out of it. So I can't fully knock it. Not bad. Right. This is pretty much identical to the clip from last video where I showed uh, my kickoff versus the GC1 kickoff. And why we cheat and all that. That's just a missed opportunity. Nothing more about that. Just unfortunate. Now this is... This isn't... It's not good <laughs> let me let me just put this it's not good 
All right, we don't recognize that CJ uh, is falling to the ball. We don't recognize that because we don't expect it happening, which is fine. We go towards the ball. We just turn too far. And it, that's what gets escorted on here. As we just turn too far, we realize a little bit too late that we turn, we try to turn now instead of the, you know what I mean? Like it's the, uh-oh, got to turn faster. Like he lands here and there's, an, uh, there's ample time to realize that if you boost and turn here, you're ready for the defense. But we don't, we do it a little too late. It's all right. Actually, what do we do on kickoff? We do, we do a good kickoff, right? This is where we need to speed it up just a little bit in my eyes, right? We can see that he's not going for the ball. So there's a 50-50 shot. He's either going to leave it completely, go for a boost, or that's more than 50. 33% uh, go for a boost, go for a bump, or just completely leave the play. And he went for the bump, and we were not ready for it at the time. So, this is where I do suggest playing a little bit faster here. Like, trying to get around the Dominus, like, behind him. And so he can cut uh, the ball and get possession of it. Instead of letting CJ take a free shot, pretty much. Let's see, what do we do on this one? And again, good kickoff. Good cut. Not the best control. And yet again, like, we don't need to go for flippers out here. We can't get a play out of it anyways. And we're so low to the ground as well. So I suggest just going for a 50 here. Your teammate, as of the turn here, you like saw him for just a split second, right? Uh, to, or to the left. <laughs> he saw him for a split second on the left. So you know that he's like, roughly around the middle area maybe a little bit further back but he's roughly there so us going for a reset here is extremely greedy and honestly just tossing possession so i would have gone for a 50 here position my car like a like a vertical this like just vertical <laughs> and on the right side a little bit more so it goes to the center or left i would have left this and gone for a demo or at least try to. If I could think of it fast enough, I'd go for it. Instead of a play like this, where the defender's obviously going to get it. Good read on the jump, but you don't really need to do that. It kind of would have gotten us scored on, but... We got Lady Luck on our side for that one. Good beat here. Not fast enough, though. a good idea yeah it's just not fast enough that's all it is I'm trying to look trying to look and see where he could have maybe sped up the ball somehow but i don't know i think if the only thing that would have changed is if getting the perfect touch in that situation good defense from your teammate unfortunate overcommit of uh the flip there which is why your flip is so important but at the same time your teammate probably wasn't expecting you to bounce it off the wall <laughs> taking take it up more so we can recognize that uh this was the bad play there if you go for a pinch on the wall it's probably more beneficial for your teammate because he's a low boost and you either want to maintain possession and maybe this ball just bounced a little too wrong and i'm just over complicating it or, you know, it, it's just we went for an easier play, but it just made it harder. I don't know how to describe it. What I see here, though. I was, I'm always interested in the kickoffs. Good. Not as good. And this is, again, what I mean with the uh, resets and stuff. Is right... It's good that you're going for it, right? And I don't mean good as in like, 
Yeah, he can hit the reset. Like, he's, he's consistent with it, right? People around this rank in MMR are always going to be good enough to hit this. Like, give them 10 shots and they'll probably score like, maybe not from here. But uh, overall, they'll score like 70 plus percent, I'd say. I'd, I'd give people that. But it's when to use them. Look, we have a guy challenging you, which good on the Dominus here. That's first man objectives. Going all the way back to, I think, when I did the champ review or something like that. Champ 2 review. Is first man wants the person that's attacking as first man to give up the ball to the second man or to the first man itself. So that's good on the Dominus here. And that makes us give away possession, right? And regardless, I believe that this was a throwaway play. If we go for the 50 here, because you can hear... His teammate? Here, I'll, I'll play it again. I won't talk. You can hear... It's like a low grumble, but you can hear his teammate uh, pushing up. So, you can go for a 50 here. It would have been a little bit of a better play. And you just try and get it towards the middle. Like, if you, if you go to the right a bit more, and you try and 50 it, I think that would have led to the better play than just going for a reset just to just to have a reset i would have left that mid boost for my teammate and gone for a bump because that would be a goal right i say leave this for my teammate whoopsie uh we get a fly here i leave this for my teammate i turn i grab this pad like look how many pads we can meet him at this pad or we can meet him anywhere like in this general vicinity maybe he turns and we scare him off even more. We get a demo, let's say. And the net's open and it's 4-3 in our favor. Instead of, you know, the chance but not scoring it. But, you know, things stack up. So your teammate here has less boost. If we let him have the middle here, he could have, like, a lot more boost to help us out. That's another thing that we keep missing these boosts, these pads. And that's creating uh, kind of a lost effort in going back for the boost or stuff. Almost. If it wasn't at zero seconds, we could have won there. Not bad kickoff. We do grab the mid. We should be playing middle here. Nice. And what I mean by playing middle is not the typical, like sitting here it's like being ready for the middle so you can sit like right here like an aggressive like i would aggressively sit here because uh did how did he path i nah, got that straight up 100 so aggressive me would have sat like right around here like just further back so i can it's more safe to turn back but I would have gone like right here because we go for the mid boost. Our teammates taking it forward. So I would have drove in like this. I would have snuck in like this. The guy hits it over me and then I'm boom, I'm gone. Because what does he do? He hits it away. So it gives us time to collect the ball. We panic touch it to the opponents because oh, I say panic touch. We just hit it randomly without taking control of it. So I, I call that a panic touch good flick no demo we try to do the cool Saudi thing or Mina thing I don't know which one it is cool pro thing and then we get scored on because we're not in a position to challenge we do grab the hundred but because we messed up that flick flip it gives Dominus here enough time to get the animation of the musty instead of cutting him off at the reset. I click how much time. Let's him get the reset and then we go up. He already has done the musty with the power. And then our teammate's in a horrible spot. And like if we go back to here, our teammate here, really aggressive. Good job going back here. We're expecting our teammate to get it, which is unfortunate and just in a bad spot. 
Because the opponent landed right next to him. So we can't necessarily go back right away because the opponent is there and he could go for the bump, whatever. So he's got to dodge that as well as get the save. So, yeah. Very, very avoidable thing. We just don't do this. We just drive along the side of the road. Or the side of the wall here, not road. We drive here, we grab the 12, we grab the 100, and boom, we jump. Because guess what? If we watch this from here, we go boom, jump, but then we're on this, we're already up, we hit the ball before he gets the, the musty. Because NCJ hasn't opened that. It's ex extremely, extremely avoidable, and it's honestly a little bit sad that it ends this way because... I was looking on ball chasing and I saw a lot of blowouts and this was kind of the closest match. So I was like, okay. But it's mainly, mainly, mainly just we're doing things, we're over overcomplicating things. And I've said this to someone else, but we need to stop overcomplicating things. Doing the cool wall dashes or not whatever it's called, the wall thing, where you jump onto it. They're cool looking, yes? Do they add anything to the gameplay? Not for this certain player, right? Every time that they've done it, they've either either, <laughs> either messed it up, or it was in a too aggressive situation where they had to exactly revert what they just did, right? It was the, the play in the corner here where they did it, they did it well, but then the ball was coming back over, so they had to completely cancel it and go back on the wall here, right? Or whatever they did. Which completely defeats the purpose of doing the move in the first place. If the ball, like, if my teammate takes it up the wall, and I'm, like, over here a little bit, and I know my teammate's still on the wall, maybe then I'll do it. But I'll probably just be positioning up this way, and waiting for either the pass, the shot, the rebound, for me to score... Or, you know, a challenge, and then I go back, and I grab the boost, and, you know, I just do the, the smarter play, then, oh, gotta do this, because it looks cool. That's that's not how we should play the game, in, in my humble opinion, right? It's not how we should play the game, we should play it, like, if we look at the pros, and, like, in RLCS, like, experiences, zones... Uh, they are doing the fancy things because they know they can go for them and it's the right time to go for them. And they get something out of it, right? They can commit a man or two. That's the main thing, is what people don't realize is that when someone takes it high in uh, RLCS, they're trying to drag as many players into the play and leave as, as little people in that as possible. Or they can do what LG does and kind of what people are hopping onto is you have the first man, they hit it up, like there's like two variations. They take it up and then they leave it for either the second guy or third guy and the first or second or both go for demos so that they have an open net to score on, right? There's many different ways that LG does it, but if any of you are actually watching RLCS and see how LG score, definitely watch for that play because, and not just LG, but like everyone watch everyone see how they score and just recognize that it's they don't go in the air because they can do it and it's really cool they do it because they can drag players the defenders into the play and all they have to do like all a attacker has to do is plan for the 50 and manipulate their car into the 50 in a way that it shoots out to their teammate and they create a chance for their teammate, right? There is, yet again, another example of this. When I was playing on stream today, my teammate uh, off Swift, perfect 50 into the center, which allowed me to uh, get on the ball again, right? Stuff like that. Like, very, very smart players do this, right? That's why you see Daniel, Zen, uh, Beast Mode, First Killer, any other EU pro that you can think of that is really smart and just really good at the game. 
they will do that so that they can get possession. It's the same thing in twos here. Same thing in twos. This guy's making the play. Offensive player, right? He commit the man. This first man is out of the play, not only because A, he missed the ball, but two, he's flying away and won't be able to come back unless he lands here really fast, hits the wall dash, and can just pre-jump whatever side that the ball will get struck to. So, Dominus guy does his mission. He makes the, the first defender go, and he gets it over him. So that means it's a 1v2, but it's actually a 1v1, because right now he's out of the play, and the only person in the play is Moon and CJ. Because CJ is here for the rebound, and Moon is here in defense. Not the best positioning, mind you, but he's still in defense, right? So all that CJ here is has to put it where Moon isn't. So that's right up here, or pretty much high up here and then all of a sudden like just in this section this play it's a 2v1 because mr dominus here lands back in the play and creates a more hectic view for moon where cj just has to put it in this general area and boom <laughs> and all from that time the first man is still recovering and trying to get back in the play which is why i highly suggest people to learn how to recover faster and better earlier so they're not out of the play for decades like uh this player here is recoveries are probably one of the most important things to learn and they in my opinion take the least time because in theory it's just try to land on every surface with surface with all your wheels intact like all four here all four here 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 if you're bums and you spin just try to land and boom four wheels and then you're back in the play right simple and simple in theory but uh yeah <laughs> i've been rambling for a little bit but uh yeah i hope you guys did enjoy i hope you guys did learn something and i hope you guys did enjoy this series uh i'd be down to do this again in ones but uh that's up to you guys uh, i'll put a community tab vote uh up so that uh you guys can vote for it but yeah hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one peace